All right, so we're going to take a look at how to start a project from scratch using Autodesk Revit MEP 2012. Uh, first off, we're just going to do the new, um, and maybe you're applying a template, or maybe you have the default set to your company's template, I should say. Um, but but whatever it is, um, go ahead and apply that now before we get into it. Uh, usually, I have the properties panel on the the right side. Uh, and then the project browser on the left side so I can have full views um, up and down uh, of each of these so I don't, I'm not scrolling up and down. Uh, then, uh, this is a 17 inch laptop monitor but if, if you have any technical savvy at all you're probably on a 22 or 23 inch monitor. I find the uh, the 24 inch is, is just outside of the range of my eyes so uh, 23 seems to be perfect. Uh, so let's Let's uh, see if I can find this file here real quick. Uh, what we're looking for is a pre-set up file that I kind of have already. Um, so let's open this up from my home server as quick as I can. Uh, so my problem here is that uh, my architect, aka me, saved it in uh, Revit 2011. And I'm using MEP 2012, so there's going to be a slight delay as it's a temporary update. Uh, so basically, I'm, I'm trying to show a whole bunch of things that might come up in an office environment. So hopefully you get used to anything that uh, might go wrong so you can uh, push right through it without much mental taxing. Uh, so once it finally gets through all of that, uh, you can you know, start to, uh, well, we've got some, some issues right at the top of the bat right here. Um, so I'm going to have to rotate this 90 degrees it looks like. Uh, so let's go into manage position, rotate project north, and in this case 90 degrees counterclockwise so I have the project north facing up. Oh, perfect. And quickly adjust the bounding box here so we can work with a more limited scope we're not having to deal with everything else on the screen great uh, first off it doesn't look like the lower level came in so let's go ahead and, and make that real quick uh, well maybe it did but we don't have one over here. Uh, so I'm just going to hold control and drag this down to what looked like 9 feet. We're going to call that lower level. We're at 9 feet. That's fine. Uh, now if you notice, and, and a lot of people know this, but the blue means that Revit has already made a floor plan for it. If it's black, uh, it doesn't have a floor plan attached to it. So we're probably going to make that real quick because it only takes just a second. Uh, so if we wanted a floor plan, the only thing, the only choice that's available is uh, lower level at, at this point. Um, not a big deal. And then you see it's blue. Um, so uh, now it recognizes it. Um, now let's let's see what we can do with the the copy monitor. Now that we've got everything in here. Um, so now that I'm in an elevation view, I can start to look at this link. Let's go into collaborate this time and copy monitor and I'm going to go ahead and select this link. I'm going to copy multiple levels. This level, this level, this level, and this level. And then little finish. And then big finish. So we should have some levels in here already. Here's I'm going to have to do that one more time because I have multiple levels stacked on each other. Let's try this one more time. Let's copy North Plan. There we go. The roof. Second level. And, and that one does exist. So let's go ahead and finish that. And now we have our levels in there. Uh, so what are we going to do next? Uh, remember, this is this is all about workflow. It's a process. Uh, whereas in AutoCAD, you just kind of did whatever you wanted. The project browser was usually set up by default, and you just started drawing lines. But 
It's not the case with Revit. You're, you're modeling significantly more real time this way. Uh, so let's take a look at a 3D view here. And we're eventually going to want to copy monitor. Uh, for now, just the lighting fixtures. I'm going to show you how to do that step, and then we'll you'll be able to interpolate how to do uh, pretty much every other category. Um, so copy monitor lets you take the placement of the fixtures the architect has in their model and start using it. Uh, the problem engineers have with that is that architects sometimes put a fixture in the wrong location, but you need to realize that the owner probably wanted it in some uh, location, so it's not really the architect's fault. Um, it's just a matter of convincing that owner that uh, there's a better location for it. So it, it'll change and it'll come our way. Uh, so let's manage our, our coordinate settings uh, first off the bat here before we do anything. Now, if you notice something new in 2012, you have significantly more choices here before. In 2011, you had air terminals, you had uh, lighting fixtures, you had mechanical equipment and plumbing fixtures. But now you're able to, to grab a quite a few more options here. Uh, so with lighting fixtures, we have some more options to uh, allow a batch copy, which is what we're going to need to do, uh, being that there's probably over 100 lights in here. Um, and we can go ahead and, and leave that as uh, um, copying the original. Let me check that one more time. So we'll be able to uh, allow a batch copy in that link, and we'll specify that type mapping. Uh, so th this way we can come in and we can actually uh, figure out what the suspended light is, and, th and this will tell me what, what all these are, or in this case, um, what these outdoor wall sconces are, the Visa lighting, I've got 120 volts to it, they're 39 watts. So right off the bat, my electrical engineer uh, knows what he's dealing with, which is uh, really handy, and that's, that's really the eye in, in BIM, the information. Uh, so let's go ahead and save that. I'm not going to apply that yet. Uh, there's still a couple other things we need to do. I, I noticed that there's not an electrical lighting plant, so we can, we can go ahead and make that really quick. That shouldn't be uh, too difficult at all. If we wanted to, we could do this a number of ways. If we needed to do we needed to create another reflected ceiling plan, except in this case we want the discipline to be electrical, the sub-discipline to be our lighting plan. Uh, we want just to show complete, let's see what we look like here, and view range, we're going to need uh, something a little bit different. I'm just going to quickly go through this. This isn't probably what I would normally do, but just to get those to show up. Uh, I find that would be very helpful. So let's go ahead and, and go with that. So now we have exactly what we need, and, and we can start our process here of, of copy monitoring. So let's go ahead and select our link. Perfect. Let's do a batch copy, and we've already allowed this, and we're going to go ahead and, and copy these fixtures uh, since we've had those settings saved. I'm just going to pause real quick unless my computer gets it done in the next couple seconds. So I'm going to do this a different way and go through and select multiple. I don't know why it's not letting me select a, lo a lot more at once. Um, you should be able to select all these, but it's not letting me. Um,
So you hit the little finish and then you hit the big finish. Sorry, there is a little bit of a, of a gap between these. Um, but we were uh, essentially able to, let me nudge this over to, to, to show that it is actually in there. So we do have lights that are in here. So that's going to be very helpful when you're setting up for uh, lighting and power. So now we are able to grab all these fixtures, uh, run power to them, select our wire type, and voila, we have a system. So I hope you found that helpful, um, and, uh, and if not, then maybe uh, some of the hints and tips that I've shown along in the process are going to be helpful. Um, have a good one, and be sure to check out my YouTube channel for more videos on Revit Architecture, MEP, and soon 3ds Max Design, among many others.